On boss talk one on one. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm with the lovely official, Mr. Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, my dad. Walk on. Man, man, I tell you, man, um, today is a day. Um, you know, uh, sometimes we get people in and we just be trying to figure out, hey, man, so what happened with this? You know, we kind of nosy, if you really be honest about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Say, man, check it, man. We got a great guest in here today, man. Mr. West Grandstaff, what's going on, brother? What's up? Glad to be here. Hey, man. So, uh, yeah, man, uh, actually, Austin, I had got to talk with him and we brought you up and he, he, the, the stories got so interesting. We say, well, why don't you tell him to come over and, and, and give us an insight on how good you were. You said you was the number one basketball player and I, all of these things. I said, I don't want to make this uh, mm -hmm. fish bigger than what he is. I want to hear the, the story from the man sitting next to the man. <laughs> well, so, I'm kind of upset if he didn't just say Google me. That's oh, he didn't, did say. he? Yeah, he didn't just, say just, it. No, he just didn't. Just Goog me. That would, that would be great if yeah. he'd have said that. Then we may not have had this interview. No, probably no, not. No, <laughs> yeah. no we yeah, would have. He, yeah, he's got a video out there that has, like, uh, YouTube that has over 800,000 views called I'll Give Your Whole Team Buckets. Really? Yeah. So, so no. let's, let's go back to your story. Talk, talk a little bit about you from Dallas. I'm from, oh, I grew up in, well, I was when I was born. born. Yeah, I lived in. Oak Cliff. Oak the, Cliff. Yeah, we lived in the projects across really? from Parkland Hospital when we, uh, when I, I was little. That. Okay. And then we moved over to uh, Highland and Ferguson. My mom was married seven times, so we just kind of... Seven times? Huh? Yeah, she's married seven times. Couldn't get you know married in we, Texas no more. They you, told her oh, no they more. Have a no more. They have a limit in Texas? They used to. You couldn't get... You had to go I somewhere never else. I knew that. Yep. Seven times. So, okay, hold on, hold on. Let me ask. So... How old was she when she married the first one? Uh, well, she was pregnant with me at fifteen, so okay. she wow. so she married my dad. And they lasted till I was about two, and then okay. she got with a, another dude that she had known before. He and he, she was with him when I was like three, four, five. Okay, baby six. He got put in prison. He went to prison. Then she got with a guy named Bob Boone, who kind of got me into sports. He moved me over okay. to, to Garland, to Eastgate Apartments, where yeah, Eastgate, yeah, man, yeah. I know exactly where you was at. Yeah, and right then, off of Ferguson. When you turn right, you go to and, in uh, Centerville and turn that left on Saturn. That's where, yeah, that was my stomping grounds. And that there was an old man there named Dick Keller who taught me discipline. We had a six court facility there, or two court facility, but like tons of goals. Mm -hmm. And he. Taught me discipline, and and he brought me over here to play at this Y. He got, he taught us that the, he taught me that there's no black and white. It's it's it, it, it don't matter what color your skin is. Mm -hmm. That guy. Really? When we would travel to outside tournaments in third grade, you would I would have to sleep in the same bed with a black kid, and he mixed us all up like that because he really wanted us to know that, you know. You know, different sound, than me. Sound, sound like Remember the Titans. You know what yeah, I'm talking about? Yeah, <laughs> kind of was. Same yeah. concept. Yep. So, so, I, I was, so she, so she, um, how, I'm trying to figure out what was her longest relationship and how long were the marriages for, because for seven, seven marriages, a lot, a lot of them were short, short like yeah. two, three years, all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. And, and all of them were abusive. All of them were drugs. Um, mm. first time, um, Austin's mom went to a, a birthday party. Mom is my mom's 40th birthday and we had just gotten together and she went and my stepdad was being kind of rude to my mom and i said hey i'm gonna get up out of here well my wife's never seen a fight in her life and he said he wanted to he wanted to whoop my ass is what he says so i said well hey let's go let's go and, yeah and so i went outside and tore him up and my wife ran inside and said call 911 and like my family and they're like 911 we, <laughs> we we're going out to watch you know and then so, but that's just kind of how our family was. I stopped wanting to have birthday parties because there was a fight at every birthday party. The yeah. cops came to my, I mean, my, it was my own family fighting each other. Mm. Wow. So, but it was, my mom was five, right at five foot and Short. just, yeah, but. But feisty. Yep. Yeah, she told me I was her horse if I never won a race. She, she was good to me. I mean, I, I wouldn't change nothing. We, we lived 32 places growing up. I mean, we wow. bounced around. 32. So yeah. you really didn't, except from that person, the, the father that, um, introduced you to um, basketball. Mm -hmm. How was it like being raised, by, I would say, by so many different, you know, dads, so to say? 
you know, I, I always got to see my dad. My my dad, though, he, he was into a lot of bad things. Um, got me in Golden Gloves when I was real little because I, I had a lot of they, – they used to put me in a circle when I was like – maybe five, six, or seven, eight, when I would, it was his weekend, and I'd have to fight other little kids, and they would get high and bet on us, and it, we were like chicken fights, and it was other little kids would come over to, to fight, and so it was just a different, I, I was raised different, so I go to a regular school with regular it, kids. It, it was a different time, but at the end of the day, at least you got to go home, you mm, know what I mean? Yeah, that, no. That's the good part about it. Yeah. I, I, can, I, can, I can respect that, you yeah. know, because least you got to go home and the people that you did have those dealings with if you ever seen them again y'all had a respect for each other oh sure you yeah, know what i yeah, mean yeah no i was it was today he would go to prison or, or go to jail for and the people around would but back then that was just cool Normal. Like, and and nobody had hard feelings i'd go play with that kid after i whooped his ass that's right. i mean that's just how how it was i wish it was more like that today it, in a not, sense yeah. because people picking up guns you know what no, i mean no no we used to just go out back and get it over with and if you say I gave, I normally let you up unless you hit me real hard, then I might hit you an extra time. But then I get let, <laughs> help you up and dust you off. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, but but my mom's longest relationship was probably to the one guy that I got into it with that time, and it was probably seven or eight years. He was a pretty good dude, but she had some real bad ones. Um, she's passed now. Um, I and, rest but, herself. Yeah, she 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 did good. Yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't change nothing. Right, wow. right. Um, I just always wonder about the father figure part. I was, I was going to ask about so your grandmother did, did was she in the different relationships as well? Yeah, my my her mom was you know down on um. Harry, Harry Hines, not Harry, not Harry Hines, but but yeah, 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 close. Uh, but she, she ran bars and, and she was a. In, that's what um, I was just. I, yeah, I had to say that's that. all. All she did and and she was a drunk. She drank. I mean, she'd babysit me and drink a whole bottle of vodka in wow. in in a night. Um, you know, just it, my uncle. He raised himself, which is her wow. son. You know wow. that. That's why they. You know, my my mom's sister had two kids by the time she was 15, already had two mm. kids. My mom had me, so all three of us were raised normal. together. Yeah, and, and so it, it, it was, they didn't care. You just, I mean, and, and, and I think that's what made me the dad I am to be. Yeah. I'm almost too involved. I can't go to sleep at night unless I know where all three of my kids are. They're yeah. safe. I, I just, I trip yeah. out. It, it usually, it does take a different toll on different people. Like it'll mm -hmm. totally wreck. Mm -hmm. opposite you know you get a total opposite reaction a lot of times when somebody go through a lot and when finally the one person that that it it triggers something in them to say i'm not going to be that way uh, well i was the second person on both sides of my family just to graduate high school wow the second person uh, i had an uncle on both sides that both graduated high school and then i did wow. and then we've had cousins now my daughter graduated college austin's graduated college my younger son he'll graduate wow. i mean it's just you got to change the pattern that's but what made you but what what made you make up your mind to say that I'm not going to be like them? Basketball and, okay. and, and, and sports and cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, <laughs> they, they kept me going. I, yeah. I, I didn't care nothing about school, and I could have quit school, and it would have <laughs> been okay. My family would have been fine. I, I, my dad resented me for graduating high school in huh? ways. Yeah, he, he. I thought I was better than everybody, cause I, oh, yeah, and, and then I yeah, went to college yeah. and hooped, and, and, and he just, you know, you're better than me. And then... You know, we raised, my wife and I have had two black kids that have lived with us who parents didn't want them. Well, my dad and granddad and all them are from the old school and when it comes to that. I mean, my granddad didn't want a black person coming into our house. That's yeah, how yeah, bad yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, but I was always different because that, that man, Mr. Keller at Eastgate, taught me to be different. And so. Thank God for, yeah. for Mr. Keller. <laughs> yeah. Well, my wife and I just, you know, if. We'll take anybody in if we really feel they needed it, and we, right. we've helped we've helped raise a couple of kids and and that weren't ours, and that's just what we do because mm -hmm. people help me, and I feel like you always got to give back. You can't right. forget where you came from, and you got to help. If nobody helped me, I'd be in prison right now, dead. That's mm -hmm. right. Who knows? But well, God put people in people's life to create changes, and it's a chain reaction that is not for the moment right now and it could be mm -hmm. but it's really for down the line you see how many more people that person could help yeah exactly i i think you you, you you're just describing uh a lot of times you know poverty you you're describing things that happen in a lot of not only white but black hispanic 
it yeah. happens in families all the time it because does. but because of a lot of time dysfunctionalities that stream mm-hmm. from your background generational so, sin I, as we always we ain't gonna say, say curse right no i didn't Since say mr curse. lee said mr. Lee correct says not a, right yeah. but it is generational sins and you do have to stop it at some point yep but so, you have to want to change because some people just automatically fall into it i've seen where kids say um my, my mom used to always get abused so i'm not going to be like my dad when i get older but they end up just like him. They as fall they into it. Fall, fall right into, into it. it. Yep. So I think, so hearing your victory story, I should say, how is it that, I'm still trying to go back to that, how can that person who is listening, who find themselves going into something not meaning to, and made up their mind that I'm not going to be like this person, but still seeing traits, or not, mm-hmm. even, not even be noticing that they're going through the traits? Oh, it happens, you know, and, and I, you know, I had to, I could easily fall into to getting high and, and doing all that, but it just it, it just wasn't for me. I I, I wanted uh, you know I remember I was a really good soccer player when I was little. I played for the Eastgate Gators, was hey. our team, and but my dad the night before or the day before picked me up, and he was about my mom's, and he took me to a to a nude bar, and I drove there in seventh grade. And, mm. and he took me in and made them let me come in. And then he tells me to go put money in up there. And they kick us out. And he goes crazy. Cops are coming. And, and But the next day I had a soccer game. And he's so hung over that he tells me I have to quit the team when I get there. He goes, I'm going to take you to the game, but you got to quit. And I go play the game. He sleeps the whole time. I end up scoring like three or four goals. Had a great game. I go to the car. He didn't want to hear how my game was. He says, so did you tell him you quit? And I'm like, no, I didn't tell him I quit. Like, <laughs> Yeah, but but that's I was never I never wow. missed a game of Austin's. I never missed a game of my other son. I missed some cheerleading stuff with my daughter, but my wife handled that. Yeah. But I, you know, it's just I think there needs to be a parent in the stands, and they wow. need to know you're there to support them um, if you can. If you have to work or something, that's another thing because you're supporting them in another way. Yeah. But you know, if you're getting messed up and all that other stuff then you know you need to check yourself i love that you're telling this story because you have so many kids out here in sometimes in good situations but feel like i just have the worst you know how some mm-hmm. kids oh this is just worse my parents this my parents that but not realizing that there's so many people have it worse than they do and mm-hmm. i'm sure that even in the situations that you were in there are people out there who had it way worse than you did you know oh, what I absolutely. Mean? So yeah. it's it's just I just love to hear people tell their story, and, I, and that's the one thing that we use this platform for is to educate people, because kids right now and adults all they do is watch YouTube. People are not watching TV as much as they mm-hmm. used to. Mm-hmm. So if we can give them an avenue to know that they're not the only ones going through certain things, or maybe their kids are reacting a certain way and they don't know how to handle it, and just by watching this and hearing somebody tell their testimony of how they handle a certain situation and overcame it that they're able to implement that into their yeah. lives and that's the only reason why we have this platform is to help and educate people right well, most well, definitely. and my biggest thing is 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 my parents love me my grandparents love me i had there was love but they were kids having kids and they were right. trying to figure it out and they had their their own you know they wanted to live you know and here i am a you know what are we going to do i mean so I, you know my mom got married seven times and i guarantee you six of them were to keep a roof over my head and and try to have some food and try to you know she she did things she did the best she could she did yeah she did things that she probably really regretted but yeah, I never missed a meal I'll, you know mm-hmm. if the lights how got many turned siblings up, do you have I have one that's a, a um, same dad different mom different yeah oh, okay and, yeah and we're really so your close. mom didn't have any more children no just, she okay. she lost a few and I mean but no she, that was it okay. I think God gave her all she could handle exactly with me, so. So do you feel like, um, you know, um, you feel like you, oh, through it all, would you, what would you change if you could go back? Man, I, don't, I wouldn't change anything. I mean, it, it made me who it I am. You, who you, are today. you know, I mean, you, you Google my name. I'm the godfather of youth basketball in North yeah. Texas for, yeah. for yeah. A, a long time. I mean, I've helped so many kids on my platform, and I would have yeah. never done that if yeah, something changed. If I'd have been rich or... And when I was little and had everything I wanted and had a car that I wanted, and I mean, I would have never done what I did. I'd have been spoiled. So. What's the most touching story you've ever heard from a child that you've helped yeah. during all the years? I know that there probably have been a lot. There but are like a lot. The, the most touching one that probably brought you to tears. Um, it's the kid that we took in. I mean, um, 
he was an eighth grader and he was getting in trouble a lot at school and they called his dad and his dad said you know i don't i'm 44 years old i don't have time to raise a 14 year old kid call his aau coach so i get a call from the school and i have to drive over there and so i take care of stuff there and then i go to take him home we're getting ready to go to virginia for a tournament and we knock on the door he can't get in we can't get closed so after that night and somebody had just got shot over there it, it was on ferguson in, in um 635 right there on the left wood meadow a, that yep that new a, holland new it used to be new Holland. <laughs> yeah there's a yeah, yeah it, it, right there right when you turn left it's right there on the left yeah and um you know his dad wouldn't give him a key to the apartment so there's times he would sit out in front of his apartment all night and all he's about to get into is just bad stuff if he mm -hmm. just stayed there and so i said you know what you're gonna come with me you're gonna live with me we went to walmart got him stuff got him underwear got him everything he needed for the tournament and came back i enrolled him at south garland where i went to high school he should have went to rockwall but he wouldn't have fit in there so i put him with my high school coach and you know he we bought him a car when he became a, a senior junior and senior year i got him a little car and you know his whole life changed and, wow that's and, great yeah and, so you know, where is he at now um, has a little kid of his own. He still calls me normally on Father's Day. Yeah. To swings through. That's and dope. Yeah, he's a good dad. And Because I've always told him, and I promise him, I said, you know what? I've helped you. And if you have a kid and you ain't a good dad, and I find out, I said, I'm going to beat your ass. And I said, and, <laughs> and, 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 and if I can't, if you get too, if I get too old and can't, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll get something. I'm going to get you, though. Yeah, yeah, you're going to get it. But, you know, that that's, that's all awesome. I care about. That's the only thing I want from him. I'm never asking for no money back. I'm never asking for nothing. And you know we were struggling with our own family and money. We I I, I wasn't loaded. So you know? he, was he about the same age as Austin? No, Trent was. Um, he was probably six seven years older than Austin. Okay. Yeah. And he came to live at, with y'all when your sons were. When my dog. Everybody was younger. He was younger. Yeah. So any of your kids felt like you were paying him more attention than they were Cause you know no. that can also happen yeah our kids that weren't, weren't raised like that okay. they, they were all good i mean we have another kid named franklin he'll be um playing at smu next year hey. he's from nigeria we brought him we, we brought him over to um to play basketball when he's in eighth grade now he um is going to he went to loyola where they made the final four and then he's now going to uh, SMU for, to get it, and he'll get a double masters. And he was an African kid that came over and couldn't speak English, but he wow. lives with my daughter and her husband a lot of the time, and then stays with us a lot of the time. And so we're we're his family. When he's spring break, he's at our place. Summer, he's at our place. I mean, oh. but the, our family's just like that. Our door's always open, and wow. our kids have yeah. never resented it, or because we take care of them. I mean, I mean, they got know that they got to take care of people too. Yeah, they, they love you a lot. I know Austin, he definitely cut for you a lot. He, yeah. he, that's what he would say. You know, he's very humbled about the, the <laughs> conversation. But as far as let's get into the basketball a little bit. Yes. So what, when you, what was the first, how old were they when you first start bringing them in to play basketball and, and you dealing with them? Um, as far as the little, the youth. We start, no, but let, sorry, but go let's ahead. go back further to when you used to play basketball because it started from you playing basketball before. Yeah, yeah. And as you, when did you, you said he, um, one of your dads, I'm going to call him that. Yeah. You know, one of your dads, um, he introduced you to basketball. So how old were you when you just started? Well, he's the one who introduced me to just sports. Sports. Yeah, okay. like soccer. I mean, basketball, boxing. They put me in golden gloves. And I was in second Second grades when we moved mm -hmm. from over by White Rock Lake, we moved over to Eastgate because of him. <clears throat> and how old were you when you chose basketball over and everything, all, else. everything else to say that this is the sport I wanted to do? Well, in in I started playing football in seventh grade, mm -hmm. and I was I was really good. In, I was I was a bigger kid, like I was bigger than most kids, and I was faster than most kids when I was. Like I have articles that my thirty nine points lowered my season average of forty one when I was oh. in seventh grade. I was. I was just so far advanced because of that guy who coached that little third grade team. He he really taught us how to play, mm -hmm. and um, so. But once I got, I, I played freshman football. But you know, I wanted to be in the air conditioned gym where people could <laughs> see you. That, that all you can see in football is just a number, and mm -hmm, and so I mm -hmm. chose the that. And then I, my freshman year, no, my sophomore year, our high school team was twenty eight no number one in the state at South Garland, and so. Basketball was the deal at South. Our football team, my senior year, was 0-9 and one. They wow. tied one game, and and I didn't want to be no part of that. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, <laughs> out there pulling railroad ties and getting. Man, what yeah. nothing but guys shifting your toy basketball, putting your right. in. Yeah, right. yeah. So I, I I gave up football after my ninth grade year, but I was always basketball. That was just kind of okay. my stage. And how far did you go with basketball? Straight to college, or did you do anything after college? No, I just went. I just played my freshman year at a school in Springfield, Missouri, and I, I broke the three point record like midway through the season there. And you were a guard. A uh, guard, shooting okay. guard. Um, I ran point some too, but I um, it was a school with no drinking and no dancing, and I've been drinking and dancing since like <laughs> sixth grade, and so I, I broke a few of the rules, and some of the people that we drank with decided that that God told them they needed to tell on us, and so they mm. sent they sent me home um, wow. at semester, but they waited till basketball was over, <laughs> um, but then I came home and. I went over to Eastfield for, I was gonna go there okay. for a semester, and then mm-hmm. I met my wife, and now we're oh. about to go to Florida Keys in September oh. for 30 year anniversary. Hey. So. Congratulations. Yeah, we're excited 30 about years. that. 30 that's, that's, years, that's dope. Yeah, that's 30 dope. years. She's, so she's, she's got a place in heaven yeah. already. She don't gotta go to church. Hey with me man, for 30 years. that's it, man. Let me ask you, so when you, when you um, I wanna get to the youth, I'm okay, headed that ahead. way. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. I wanna see how you started back dealing with the children. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's that's something that I wanna kinda of put a light on. Coaching. Yeah, well what happened was, is I put together a little team. I went down here to this- uh, to the, the Salvation Army. Salvation Army, Army yeah. uh-huh. And um, there's a guy named Carl Richardson there, and his son, one of his sons um, played at Miami defensive back from okay. Carter. And he had another son named Derek, but I didn't know I didn't know them, but I knew Carl Richardson because that coach would bring us over there. So the first team I had had a kid named Kenyon Martin on it. I, you might have heard of Kenyon, mm. and then um, but it was all kids from over here, and I mixed them with a few of the Garland kids, and I took them to an AAU tournament, and we ended up like finishing fourth. But I thought, man, this is fun, like yeah. And so, how old I, were they? Um, they were seventh graders. Okay. So what I did is, is I said, okay, I want to get more involved in this. So I went over to the AAU meeting, excuse me, and at the meeting, um, they said, you know what, we don't have a president for the our association around here. So I'm 21, and they said, you want to be president of the association? And I said, bless you. And I said, uh, yeah, I'd love to be president. I don't know what I'm doing, but sure. So I ended up being the uh, president of the association. <laughs> And then um, also the uh, over boys basketball. So from there we just started, uh, um, you know, running our uh, teams. And so, but anyway, it um, th- that's how it started. Mm. So <clears throat> as you as you went through it, uh, did any of them make it? You, it was Kenyon Martin one that made it uh, professional, or he made it pro? I've had um, roughly I think eleven or twelve guys that's gone make to the it, NBA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I've. Had probably another thirty that's gone overseas and played. Wow, that's and then awesome! I probably have had over two hundred or more that go to Division One to play college. Yeah, that have come through my program. It's called Team Texas. Was the name of my program. We were sponsored by Nike for. Wow. Um, I was sponsored by them for almost twenty years. Wow, how did you get that sponsorship? Uh, a guy named George Raveling. He's a. Uh, he he was they they call him the Godfather of a uh, basketball too, but um, he just. He, he coached at USC and he, he they hired him at Nike and he came first time I called him to sponsor us he said well first last I checked there's not Dallas in the hotbed for uh, really? basketball it, it, football is well mm-hmm. he said are you going to be up at Purdue bringing your team up there and I said yeah we'll be there and so I had a group of ninth graders and we shattered the backboard on one of the, in one of the games and when I came home Monday Adidas was calling he was mm. calling and then he became my mentor, and, and I was his guy. And I, I went and watched him get inducted into the Basketball Hall wow, of Fame in wow. Boston. So I just was blessed to get to know him. And, and you know, he's I just called him to happy birthday the other day. He's probably getting close to 80 or over 80. I mean, he's he's old now. Wow. What's your goal? So, Do you ever feel like you would like to coach maybe NBA? Uh, Probably not. I mean, there's so many, there's just so much politics in that. No, it takes the fun yeah, away, doesn't it? Yeah, and you're dealing with guys yeah. who make more money than you do. I mean, just like what just went down with, uh, uh, you know, um, the coach uh, Carlisle getting fired and, and Donnie Nelson. I mean, I love Luka Doncic, but but he caused a lot of that because they didn't get along. And who are you going to do, keep him or in, in, or are you going to keep your star? And, and he's so young. They said, you know, we, we need to have a refresher in here, and they brought in Jason Kidd and yeah, and the guy it. the guy Nico Harris that came in. He's the GM, and he's the one that was over Nike when I was there, so I know him mm-hmm. real well. Wow. Yeah, he's a good guy. What's your favorite team? 
Basketball? <coughs> oh, Mavs. Yeah, I'm a Mavs fan. You just yeah. saying that because you're here in Texas. No, he's a no. Mavs fan. I'm a uh, Mavs let, fan. Let me ask you this. Are you um, okay with the way basketball is now compared to the way it was? Because we're a little older, so we can. Do you remember when, when you had to? You, you, back in you, those Jordan days? or Yeah, I'm back in about? Jordan days, and, 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 you know, I'm just looking at how our King Elijah won or Ralph Sampson, those days. Our person Bird. where you didn't, Larry Bird, where you didn't, you, you didn't just jump teams to be on a team just because you were going to try to make a championship run. That was a different time. Loyalty. They did it different back then mm -hmm. versus the way it is now. How do you feel about that? Oh, I'm with you. Uh, I mean, it, you got on a team, you sat on a team. If you get touched, it wasn't a foul. Yeah. You yeah. know, and you could, if you fought, you fought. I mean, it just, <laughs> it, it just, it, it was way different. Now, it, I think we've got a bunch of prima donnas to <laughs> play. And, and, and that's another reason why I wouldn't want to coach yeah. in the NBA. I well, mean, let, you know. Let me ask you this. So, um, the, uh, the fact that, um, the question comes, who's best, uh, Michael Jordan or LeBron James? Uh, how do you feel about that question, and what's your answer? What would you think? It's not even a question. I mean, Michael <laughs> Jordan. I mean, I got pictures on my phone of me and I him. I know. I've yeah. seen I've the picture. You know, no. Michael Jordan is a – we used to have him. I, I think a lot of times, controversially, Michael Jordan, far as toward the blacks, he, he changed his game. Yeah. I always say that far as – now, far as a basketball player, he's dope. Yeah. But far as our people – after his dad got killed, mm -hmm. I think he got became disgruntled with 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 his own people. I really yeah. do. And, and he might have. I, I seen the change. I, yeah. For me, it was like, as far as basketball, dopest dude. I you know you see Very him on the court. Very because yeah, you can't out work of, him. But right. when it came down to our people and what he done for the culture and looking mm -hmm. back on the people that look like him, mm -hmm. I just didn't feel like he. To me, I still don't feel like today that he kind of fits that mode. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I think he could do a lot more. He could be more like you. Yeah. Well, thanks. Um, <laughs> I, 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 you know, as far as yeah. helping people, man. Yeah, I love. I mean, I, I I'm talking from a basketball basketball perspective, perspective is different. He's a beast. Um, LeBron. I mean, he he's got his own issues, but at the same time, what he's done. I mean, ha have you ever heard he cheated on his wife? No. No. Have you ever heard that he he, he opened an elementary a school? He opened yeah. up a school. I mean, you name something off the court he's done. Does he? That's does, the two. That's the difference. Yeah, does and he wear his shorts saggy all the no, time? And no. I, I mean, not that there's nothing wrong with and that. And he that's helped all his all his friends. They with him. He brought them along. Yeah. And they all business uh, no. entrepreneurs. Yeah. No. He takes care of he takes care of the people that were around him, but. But he's just, he's been a great role model. You can't go back and say he got caught doing this or pitcher here. He He's and in he's his son's life. He's a businessman. He's a great businessman. Right. So I, I love I love LeBron's game. I mean, I think he gets a lot of hate, but but he ain't Michael Jordan. No. I, I'm sorry. I, I mean, and I think there's probably, I don't think he's the second best to ever play. I, I mean, I think Who there's. Who do you think? Uh, Kobe? I mean, Kobe was a beast, you know. I mean, and God rest his soul. Um, mm -hmm. That was a bad day. That was. But but yeah. but but there's been there's been some other guys that I and I can't name them all, but yeah, there's been some other guys that I might put over LeBron. But LeBron just he plays bully ball. He's just he was just big and he can <laughs> beat you like up like you was. No, yeah, but in seventh grade, <laughs> yeah, seventh then they grade. caught up to me. <laughs> Have you ever seen a child or um, with all the kids that you've grown uh, you've raised that? Um, Maybe it could potentially be a Michael Jordan. No, no, no. There's only one Jordan. I mean, I've seen some great players, and you know, and and the worst thing that that we can do is label them. And and, and, and you know, guys go around now when these kids are little and say he's going to be a pro, and so this kid has to wear that on his back forever. And 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 people start hearing that other father. You tell me your kid's going to be like when Austin was growing up. You say, hey, my son's going to be a pro and blah. blah. I'll put Austin on your ass, and, and he'll show you real quick that he ain't going to be a pro. I mean, Austin used to, everybody around here, he used to just dust. I mean, really? He spoke about yeah. that on Austin. Yeah, yeah. He's, he said the same things yeah. on his show. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I mean, I've had dads that, that kids played at, at high majors <clears throat> that would come up and say, uh, y'all's team ain't gonna be very good much longer because you know y'all because we had we had some we had three or four white kids that started but they were good and he said because the athleticism is gonna take over mm -hmm. and I go tell Austin hey man he said athleticism and Austin give him forty and talk to him the whole time and tell him wow yeah how about that athleticism <laughs> how about that <laughs> you so know how, how disappointed was you when when Austin decided uh, he was done with basketball mm -hmm. I mean it, it it hurt I mean you know Austin. Um,
you know, he had a baby uh, right yeah, at right yeah. right at you know he had a baby on the eleventh. His birthday was the tenth. Baby on the eleventh. Then he left for Ohio State <clears throat> on the thirteenth. Wow. And he was out of shape. Um, he he you know he never got to be what he was going to be because he you know he had he had to deal with trying to be in a baby's life that's and I've always told him you gotta be if you have a kid you need to be in his life well mm -hmm. you can't do that from Columbus Ohio like you want to and you got a baby's mom who's on you saying hey you, you don't you care more about basketball than you do our kid blah 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 and 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 you know and, and, and that's just messing with his mind the whole time and he just never never was what he was supposed to be on the court how did you feel when he came to you and told you that um, he was about to have a baby for the first time? Well, I I thought I, I thought he was being lied to. Uh, I, I didn't believe it. Um, and you know, um, he he came and told us after his basketball bang his senior year, um, he got all these awards and all that stuff. And then we were in. I remember we were laying there, and he came in and said, "I need to talk to y'all." And he told us. And then he played in the Michael Jordan game up in New York at the Barclays Center. And he showed me some pictures of uh, of the baby that she had sent. And I'm like, this shit's starting to get real. <laughs> and, then, um, and so I start Googling up fake pictures going, dude, she's just messing with you. Look, I got a picture. Look, that look just alike, right? Uh -huh. He goes, daddy, she ain't messing with me. And so we started to try to just figure it out. But, yeah, you know, that's family. I can tell you, I can tell you that. That was the biggest blessing ever. I don't care what Austin gave up or would have been, could have been, should have been now. It is what it is. And we got a good-looking six-year-old little kid who eyes are that big, and he loves the world. He loves his daddy, and he knows who his daddy is, and that that's what it's all that's about. What, that's so, way more important. And right? Austin yep. loves him dearly. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, my, my, we'll get money. I mean, I've been poor. I've been – Better, I mean, bad. I mean, we know what it's like. We survive. And that kid would always have everything he ever needs, whether Austin makes it in music or doesn't make it in music. Mm -hmm. And he feels like he's gonna. And, and you know what? Our whole family supports him, and, and we're going to give him every opportunity to make it. What mm -hmm. about what about um, parents? I just thought about these parents that uh, he was coaching kids. Did any of them ever accuse you of racism, or did any of them come at you sideways about the way you dealt with the children? No. I, the, the, the only thing that ever happened was kind of funny was when Kenyon Martin was playing for me. Um, I, we had gone over. I stole him from another team, and I went over to pick him up, and I think his mom had had a few drinks, and, uh, and I knocked on the door, and she opened the door, and she said, what's your name? I said, Coach West, and she goes, Leroy told me about you. Said you were slapping the little boys on the bottom. Oh damn! <laughs> and, and I said what? And uh, and Kenyon's sister was there, and she's like, "Mama, you know Leroy's just mad because he's playing on his team. He ain't slapping no little kids on the bottom." <laughs> and I was like, "That made me feel so awkward, you know." And she, <laughs> he was trying to keep him from going. To your oh, he team. didn't want him playing our team. He said, "Yeah, they were practicing over here, and he was slapping them on the bottom." I'm like, come on, man. She got so, you. Yeah, she got me. And then I had one guy one time. He said. Um, he started trying to, to bring up the black white and yeah. and my wife was sitting next to me and I and I messed up. I said, "Man, I said you don't know me very well because I'm a I'm a black man and no, I'm a white man in a black, black man's body." body. My wife goes, <laughs> "Don't no, ever do you mean it the other way?" And I said, "Yeah, I mean I'm a I'm a black man in a white man's body." <laughs> so, but that's that, that really never much because I would I mean I could go in South Oak Cliff and be, high school in you sock. know, yeah, sock. I could. I mean, I I was just walked right in. The everybody would come over and treat me just like you Anybody know. Else, yeah, yeah, and I, I never had a problem going yeah. into. Well, that. it's probably yeah. because of all the things you went through growing up. I think God prepared you. Mm -hmm. You know, going through all those tough times, mom in and out of relationship, coming from a dysfunctional family. You know, I think that prepares you because you really was explaining what it was to be black when you was young as a white kid. Because a lot of times our our homes are broken and. And, and impoverished or Hispanic, you know, that that that's something that's of the norm. You was in the area where, I mean, come on, man, East Gate, man, it was bad back then. Well, when I, when I grew up there, um, back in the early '80s, no, it was it was considered the one. It of was the, it was nicer. Like, like yeah, it was. Well, considered when, when, I can tell you when um, around about uh, '93. Okay. 
Yeah, that thing wasn't nice no, no more. No, no, it, it, it got really, <laughs> you know it got really saying? bad. Over I know because I was over there a lot, but cutting when, up. But when I lived there, it was considered the nicest place. I mean, the Dallas Cowboys brought their kids over to play really? on the soccer teams. Yeah, like wow. the, Tony wow. Hill. I mean, you yeah. know, it, it was the spot. And then they had a in the summer they had a, a bubble they put over the pool. It was yellow and white indoor swimming. Uh, I mean, it was it was the grass was cut. It was nice. And then I went over there when I got in high school. Like in 86, 87, 88. No, it, it was looked like a war zone wow. compared to what, yeah, what I, I told had. you. Yeah, it, it yeah. went, it went, it left. It went fast. Yeah. Let yeah. me let me just say that um, when you was when you was dealing with the basketball like you was, man. Um, did you ever have a raw talent to come from just out of the place that you was like, dang? Like it seemed like every time he touched the ball, it was just it was meant. Like yeah, any kid like that. Well, because I, mean, I know you're a coach, you had to train a lot of times. But yeah. was there any freak of nature that naturally had it? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm asking. Well, I, I mean, I had I had several. Brian Hopkins, he went to, to Dallas Lincoln. He he was just a freak. You could tell in seventh grade he was he so, was getting up on the rim, and and he was on that team that shattered that bad yeah, boy yeah. that time. And then the, when they got to be seniors, we had Bracy Wright on the team, him, and we won every tournament across the country. And we play. I mean, we go. You had every Nike sponsor team there, and it was the best of the best. Carmelo Anthony was there, wow. all those, and, and we won every tournament. We were we were the number one team in the country, and Brian Hopkins was what just year a was freak. That? Um, around two thousand, yep, two thousand. Um, and we only had seven eight kids, but they could just get you. I mean, they, they were just tough. With yeah, no, with no with no getting out of. No, they they get after you, and we had a great coach. They ran a lot of stuff, and just you know, he took a. And then um, Darrell Arthur, he played at South Oak Cliff. He he came up to us, and he was really really raw when he started. Uh, Lamarcus Aldridge, who's played forever, he was real raw. It's like a six. He was skinny about that that then, and um, you know he ended up playing in the league for almost 14, 15 years. Wow! For, for Portland and the Spurs. That's that's so, dope, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did they have a they have a call back? Yeah. You know, he, I thought he would, and he didn't. He yeah. promised me he would before he left, <laughs> but when he signed that big check, he he forgot Coach West. You <laughs> Coach know, West. number changed. Uh, Man, so. that, that that happens. Yeah. I've, I've been through that. But you know, I never. I I probably couldn't be more aggressive to call back and and say, "Hey, we need help. We need." It. But. I'm just like, man, that's those guys' money. Take care no, of your family. No. Right. You, you know, give me, you, yeah, just give me the money for the hamburgers I bought. We'll call no, it. Gotta, it got to be from here. <laughs> yeah. If it yeah. ain't from here, I don't want it. No. You can yeah. keep it because yeah. it don't it don't seem genuine. Like, like you shouldn't have to ask. They should no. want to give back. Not at all. I mean, when, when Lamarcus played for me, I'd take him home, and he lived in a mobile home over here in Seagaville. Wow. And to go into his house, he would have to duck his head to get in because he was He's so, so tall. tall. But. I would I hired him to do what we hired uh, adults to do, but I was paying him twenty dollars an hour, wow. and he would work all weekend. All he had to do was pass out score sheets, make sure no fights broke out, and to just, just handle stuff there. And I mean, he was making almost more than his mom was making wow. in a week working for me. It was so, over there off Mathis and called probably over there. Off, I know where they was probably at. Yeah, too. and then I, you know, I, I took him, I, I took him to the Jordan camp. And there he got to play against Jordan and Pippen and, wow. and, and Santa Barbara. And then he ended up being a Jordan uh, brand player. I mean, wow. it, the, the doors I helped open for him mm-hmm. were unbelievable and no phone call. And, and like, you know, my son, I, Alec used to play one-on-one imaginary against the Marcus in the living room all the time. I mean, they just loved this this kid and just never got any I kind think, of call. I think, you know, I think about God and I think about I'm a, I'm a Bible guy. And, uh, one leper out of ten looked back, man, uh, and he was a Samaritan. Yeah. Like sometimes it, it's it's funny how people they don't acknowledge the things that they get blessed with. Yeah. So you just gotta be you gotta be you know you just gotta be consistently from your heart doing mm-hmm. it from your heart. Too. Yep. And then you can't worry about it's kind of like these clothes I buy in the store. You know, like I buy it from my heart, and I don't care if nobody bought, bought it. I own it. And mm-hmm. I, I'm gonna take the chance for me. Sure. And I feel good about yeah. it. I can sleep at night knowing that I made the right decision when I purchased whatever I purchased. That's right. And yeah. I guess that's why we've been here 15 years. You know what I mean? Be here 15 know. more. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Just doing the right thing. Just, just they'll trying. be here another 15. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so go have there been um, a kid that you started training, you started helping, but then for some reason they had to quit, or you saw them going the wrong way, and you couldn't help that child? Wow, that's a good question. Yeah, I mean, we we had a, lost one, huh? Yeah, like yeah. you lost one. Well, I lost him 
but then he came back not to me but to somebody else which okay. was my whole point is you know we had a kid that just kind of was a, a, a just a wild stallion type kid very talented he's still playing he played he play, he's played at texas tech um he's, he'll probably play pro but you know we're out of town on a, on a tournament and when we're out of town we go to we go to win and we 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 go to bed at a certain time and we do things right and i'm now that don't mean I do. The kids do. We're down, we, we stay in the lobby, the coaches, and we we might have some beers and just talk mm-hmm. about the games that day, whatever. Well, it's like two thirty three in the morning. I look up and he's walking in his flip flops down the lobby. I said, "Hey man, what you doing?" He said, "Getting me something to eat." I said, "We got to play in the morning, like at ten o'clock. What do you mean getting something to eat? Man, I'm getting something to eat. Well, I, you know, just ah. like that." So I let him get something to eat, and then. As soon as we got home, I cut him, and his mom was calling, saying, "Please don't do this." I said, "You know what? This is gonna help him by me cutting him, yeah, and him knowing that there's consequences when you don't do what's right." Mm-hmm. And that kid ended up going to another team, and we had to play him, and we beat him the first time, but the second time, he, he kicked our butt. <laughs> he was a problem, he it and he told us about it. And, and but the, the, the whole time, I'm thinking to myself, you know what? He would never be doing that if I didn't do what I did. And then he ended up going to Texas Tech. He ended up going to the Final Four. He, wow. I mean, he's starts for him. He's gonna go pro. And so, and I wonder if he realizes that that's what caused it. Cause you know, some people say, "Oh, it, it was all me. Yep. It was all me." It it, pro- he it probably don't. Get- but I do. I know that I helped that kid. By cu- he'd never been cut in his life. What's his name? Um. Like I got a brain fart. He's like, you just um, had to ask me. Yeah, didn't you? <laughs> I can't believe that. I was gonna shout him out. Yeah, no, nah, he's uh, I'll think of it here in a minute. Okay. Yeah. I just like I said, the thing I I, I look at, man, is oh, pro- Ky- Kyler. Kyler's his name. Kyler. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. And he's still a kid. So yeah. the thing is that he's a young man no, now. I yeah, but it, kid, he, his dad like played for the Dallas man. Cowboys. Yeah. Oh, from so Liberty. Yeah. yeah. He comes. I mean, Ty- Kyler. Kyler comes from a, a great family. Uh, right. Great family. But he just. He had always been the best, and he'd always been. He felt like he'd do what he wanted to do. Yeah, Mm -hmm. he did. But his mom and dad didn't play that, you know, and and they cared. But um, he he just kind of tested it and just see we can get. And and Kyler Edwards, there it is. Wow, Kyler. Kyler Edwards. Shout out Kyler Edwards. The reason why I say kids because even us in our lives, a lot of times when we go through things in our younger life, we don't realize the reason why Mm -hmm. we had to go through things to be where we are today and looking back at it realize that oh if it wasn't for that person doing this i wouldn't be here you'll I get would, it at some point hopefully right. yeah. but it's usually when we're older yeah. and sometimes it's after we have kids and we see certain things because sometimes before kids you don't see a lot mm-hmm. of things but mm-hmm. after mm-hmm. kids you're like oh okay yeah it wasn't yeah. as easy as yeah. i thought yeah. it was yeah mm-hmm. yep yeah. yeah. but like I said, he he starts for tech. He's a he's a si- good citizen. He plays hard, and, awesome. and, and and that's not from me. That's from him having great parents. Right. But but he was traveling by himself. Maybe had, you know, and, and had a room with another guy. And and that's what bothered me more than anything. Is he's up? Well, if he's up, guess who else is up? Yeah, His roommate. Well, yeah. Well, when they had I think three or three in the rooms, what we did. So I got two other players who are probably starters who are up, and we're trying to win a tournament. And yeah. you know, that's what I care about is. It's exposure for these kids, and and they're trying to get college scholarships. You might get yours, but what about the other guys? And you know, we gotta. That's a that's a good mm-hmm. way to look at it, but it's also about discipline. You know, that's right. what the whole 100%. situation's about. Yeah, and uh, you learn a lot of discipline through people like yourself, Coach West. Uh, you know, giving these guys uh, pointers on what you can and can't do when they may not even have that structure, even though he did. Mm-hmm. Some of the kids didn't, and that's where you get that support. You know, but like um, Coach, we were talking about earlier that not all coaches know how to coach themselves. Some coaches actually been like professional basketball players or um, professional athletes and turn around and use their names to be a coach just to feel like, okay, I was really good, but. So I now can teach you and I can charge you a lot of money for you to send your kids to me for me to teach them how to be a professional. But you have to have more than just that talent to learn how to relay certain things to people and have them get it. Sure. And respect it. Yeah, man. God is good, man. And that's the reason for the season. You know, I think everything's written anyway. I really think you just stepping in in purpose, you know. Um, 
Thank you so much, man. Yeah. We appreciate you, man. You know, yeah. like I said, thanks for all you do for the kids. Mm -hmm. That's important. That's one of the core things. So <clears throat> if a kid wanted to get a hold of you and he wanted to play basketball, how would he do that? Uh, he could just reach out. Um, my number's 214-497-5680. I'm okay. not doing a lot with it right now. Just Yeah, but just a kid that yeah, need help. I I'll know help you're him. still in the helping game. That's right, 100%. So you'll know where he can go and how he can get that help that's that he needs. I give man. you my number. That's right. Correct. I, that's, that's I, I got him. That'll be on. That'll be on the show, man. And you know, yeah. a lot of these kids are on social media too. So on social media, where they can he find on Facebook. Him. We found him. Yep, I'm on so. Facebook. <laughs> and then I'm on. I, I'm a Nike Team Texas on uh, or Team Texas Nike on uh, Twitter. On Twitter, okay. Hey, yeah. do you yeah. be on Twitter a lot? Uh, a little bit. It not like, you not know, like Austin. What, Trump ran y'all. Trump ran y'all for Twitter. Instagram is. Yeah, the me place and him both got banned at the same time. <laughs> no. uh, and then Instagram seems to be the place. That's it's why, the place they, but they gonna yeah. leave because y'all, the kids gonna leave because y'all gonna run them off. They'll be on TikTok mm -hmm. anywhere not to be dealing yeah. with us. Snapchat. That's what my daughter. Yeah, anywhere they running, they don't, don't want to be with that them. She goes to TikTok because all the grown folks don't hardly be on TikTok. TikTok, yeah. What well, you hiding for, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's Austin. He's the same way. <laughs> yeah, man. Austin, dope, man. I, I, I definitely uh, loved his his energy and his music. I listened to it. He's good. Yeah. He's so a good chance. Yeah, so yeah. So I gotta ask you this question. Top three artists of all do time. Like that? Yes, I am. Dead or alive, any genre. What about is music. your top three music. artists? Top three artists. I don't care of who it time. is. Uh, you're not gonna like none of them. No matter. Go ahead. All right, Elton John. Okay. Elton John. I like yeah. Elton. Journey. Journey. I like Journey. Ariel okay. Speedwagon. That the hell is R.L. Speedway? Who the hell is R.L. Speedway? What listen, kind of music hey, do you sing? Listen to it after a few drinks and, 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 and <laughs> lights are down low. Yeah, I wasn't going to even do you like that, but we no. do ask all our guests yeah. like the top three artists of all time. I, I like uh, uh, R.L. Speedwagon is, okay. is off okay. the chain. So he said, but I know now the let's, top name, two. let's name. Okay, what was number one? Okay, hold on. Elton yeah, John, Elton Journey, John, Journey, and then say the it, R.L. R.L. Speedwagon. R.L. Speedwagon. Yeah. Take okay. it on the run, Hey, baby. hey, hold up, man. Yeah. Okay, let him see. Yeah. Let him go ahead. <laughs> I and, like Austin. Hey, yeah. I, I just got tickets today to Elton John's final tour next oh, September. Not wow. this one. Wow. Next September. Where? He's getting old now. At, at Globe, Globe Life. Wow. How old is he now? Uh, I don't even know. I just oh. know his music. Are already on sale? For on sale next? for his final tours, and it's called the Yellow Brick. Uh, he, he sings this song, Ye right. Yellow Brick Road, but... It's our, yeah, I, I got them That's, today. My wow. wife said, told them she didn't care how much they cost. She wanted me to go because I how really like it. Those weren't that bad. We, I mean, but she told them to spin up to a thousand. Okay. But, wow. and, 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 and we don't got it like that. But she, our <laughs> anniversary, <laughs> right. our anniversary is in September. So she's just trying to be cool. And so they're like three hundred a piece, and that's it. Final. Oh, that's not bad. Three hundred yeah, a piece. That's yeah, not bad. Not bad. And it was good tickets. I mean, good yeah, seats. Yeah, because we went to the Ranger game and we had really good seats right behind the plate, and they said these are better than that. So we'll see. But wow. um, I'm excited. I looked up the the fight the other day. Um, Earl Spence. No, oh, it's eight thousand dollars. Fight, though. and it was like yeah for for the floors. Oh, it's stupid. And in and, 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 uh, UFC, I love UFC. That's like my favorite thing. No, but yeah, this they're, was, they're the same way. Yeah. Just crazy prices. I was like, I was like who affords to go? How do you eat when you get there? You can't. <laughs> you can't eat. Don't don't take nobody. Well, I thank you for coming on the show, man. Yeah. And um, hey, man, uh, Wes, Coach Wes, Grand Staff. Do they, they, they call you Wes? Coach, Coach West. West. Coach West. All right, Coach West. But in you the can building. call him West. Right? Okay, definitely. <laughs> Say, man, thank you for coming on Boss Talk 101, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, hey, man, this has been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.